I'm a Williamstown boy. I lived down the waterfront in Nelson Place. I was aware of the club because a lot of my friends were in the club and through a church, uh, church clubs and cricket clubs and badminton clubs, they were all in the one group and uh, some of my friends were down here and then I thought well I'll just fo follow there because there was girls and boys in the club and uh, I found that was a great help to me in my younger years to mix with them. I had three children, one um, toddler on my hip, or well six month old child, and I was walking along the beach and I spotted this beautiful blue pool on the side of the beach and I thought, Where, how can I get to go into that pool? Maybe when I was about six years of age, I suppose, roughly. You know, when I came to learn to swim, I might be earlier than that, but it might be about four or five. Really. It was a long time ago now, but I, I think it was Rob about 1956. I'm two years younger than Rob and um, I was allowed to tag along with Rob and, and his friends. They were my friends too, but um, you know, you were probably about 12 and... Um... 12, I reckon, 19, 1956, yep. We joined as a family in the early 70s uh, because we wanted our kids to learn how to swim. Nippers on a Friday night is always something that sort of sticks out. The first summer that I joined, it was, it was very cold on the Friday night, so I remember that quite distinctly. And made, being made to run uh, to the pipe and back uh, over and over again when we misbehaved for, for our coaches. I became a member during the year of 1935. And that was the time in 19, Christmas Day 1934 when the salt water baths, the sea baths were washed away and when the club had the tin shed on the beach almost opposite Forster Street. From some time in the late 1800s until the 1920s people came to Williamstown Beach due to the bathing enclosure that had been built there for safe swimming. There was no life-saving club, but there was the Wilmstown Swimming Club. The swimming club would hold regular swimming demonstrations and racing competitions, and would also manage, maintain and collect money from people who used the swimming baths. Swimming was considered entertainment, so people had to pay for the privilege to use the beach. Then in 1922, with the idea that if people could be trained to become volunteer lifesavers and prevent tragedy and injury, the Wilmstown Lifesaving Club was born. The need for a lifesaving movement to protect and save people grew. And from that day onwards, lifesaving became part of who we are in our country. My name is Mia and I love the beach and I love to swim. This is the Life Saving Club at Williamstown Beach. It's my club and it's been here for over 90 years. One day, uh, must have been a north wind and it was nice and smooth between the diver and the racer and I swam 50 metres for the first time, it would be about 14, 15 and uh, I just kept going and going and going and I finished up swimming what they call a mile. You just kept swimming each year as you get older of course and when I got about 10 or 12 I sort of started to do bronzes and all the different awards and got one after the other sort of thing. And then probably by the time I was about 12 or 13, we saw sort of training slowly with the R&R &R sort of situation. Until I was about 14, it got a bit uh, fair dinkum then. When I first joined, it was principally a swimming club. We had top swimmers like Freddie Thomas, good pool swimmers and the like. 
Uh, our club captain, Les Hyam, had the ugliest, ugliest swimming stroke you've ever seen, but he could pull a belt and uh, that's where the club sort of divided. You were either a swimmer or you were tending to the lifesaving. I lived two blocks away from, the, from here and uh, I was having swimming lessons in the city and uh, don't love to say this but I was, I was uh, swimming for Victorian Championships under age and that's why I was also swimming down here and that was just natural though that I'd come to the beach and that's how I came to the club. The hands of many generous and wonderful people have cared for the mission of the Life Saving Club over the years. Our instructors were, as you say, Jack Mann, um, Bill Terrell, um, Maury Lovell, Sid Wookie, um, Theo Nelson, all of those guys that were just a little bit older than me. Jack Mann, and uh, he was the club captain of the time, and he used to teach everyone to, how to swim and all the, he taught us all there was to know about life saving. He taught me to swim, as I say, between the fourth and fifth steps there. Jack taught me and roared hell out of me and screamed and carried on a bit. But... Jack Mean was the secretary at the time and uh, Jack came around, there used to be a hedge, one of those shiny leaved hedges that was around the front of the club and we only had a little hand mower and the and the grass used to grow up about a foot high and Jack would come around, he'd say, I want three volunteers, I shall have you, you and you. And you, you and you had to do the lawns, whether you had blisters on your hands or not, it didn't matter, but that was the way the club went and you become a part of a team. It was brilliant. In the late 1940s, Wilmstown Life Saving Club, legends Jack Meehan and Bill Tyrrell were founded members of the Point Lonsdale Surf Life Saving Club. And we went down to Point Lonsdale, but when we went across to the back beach, we were told it was dangerous, and we were told that we couldn't patrol the back beach because it was surf life saving. Inside the bay was Royal Life, outside the bay was surf, and there the twain should meet. And Jack and Bill Tyrrell, who at that stage had joined him uh, as a terrific team, uh, found this just unacceptable that uh, this division was there. The way Jack and Bill put, a, put together our teams was uh, respect for people, respect for the sport, uh, prepared to put your life on the line if need be. Together with some uh, fellows, Jimmy Wall and Sprint Walker from Torquay, they approached the Surf Life Saving Association up in Sydney and got Alan Kennedy to come down and train us in surf life saving to uh, qualify us as surf life savers and we formed the Point Lonsdale Club and the Victorian Centre of the Surf Life Saving. We had very good um, senior fellows, like we had fellows like Sid Walkie and, and Barry Marr and uh, a lot of fellows like that. Royal Life took a dim view. They instead of expanding the role of life-saving, they had the view that they were going to lose their members out of Royal Life to the surf. And there was room for both and we, we both could expand. But Royal Life uh, were dead against it and uh, our local president and the secretary here, Captain Lally, and they uh, they uh, banned us from going down to Port London and they expelled us. So we had a general meeting and they were thrown out and Bill Tyrrell and Jack Mann took over those roles as well as all the other things that they were doing. In uh, 53, the club actually bought a surf boat for Point Lonsdale from North Bondi. We gifted it to Point Lonsdale and all our members here who were competing at Point Lonsdale but they rode it from Williamstown to Point Lonsdale and took a letter from the Mayor of Williamstown to the Mayor of the Borough of Lonsdale. And uh, both clubs went from strength to strength. The 
club has won many trophies, awards and recognition along the way. And it has rebuilt its sheds and clubhouse and added a training pool in 1963. It has held swim races and carnivals, annual events that attract community support and visitors to this little part of the bay. Well, the discipline was amazing and it was very strict. But we had so much success, you know, with reel and line and march past and competing. You had to train hard because you didn't uh, necessarily have a place in a team unless you, you know, showed that you were worthy. The club was big and it, it was really impressive. We had Anne Davidson um, leading the junior competition and she really got the kids revved up and they were off. We used to rent buses and take them down to um, carnivals. We were all with Royal Life at the time. We used to go to a carnival in an old furniture van. Um, <gasps> That's where we learnt all those dirty songs, oh, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> well, we hadn't had a junior carnival down here for many, many years. It was a magnificent day. All the clubs from the Bayside beaches came. All our kids were in every race that was on. I think we may have even won it on the day, which was a big success for Williamstown. We won the championship uh, at Morty Alec and I got presented with the, the championship sash from uh, Sir Rowan Delacombe's wife, who was the then governor of Victoria. Two standard bearers come down and, and march me up to, um, to get presented with the, the winning sash. I was pretty proud too. The club has been celebrated and yet at times has struggled. For all kinds of reasons, membership over the years have risen and fallen yet the club has always been represented with good people. No, there wasn't a lot going on at the time. In the early 70s, there was the committee, not very many members, and we thought we needed to be part of it to um, try and help build the club up. We were a bit worried that the council were going to close the club rooms down at the time. When the opportunity came up to get on the committee, I put my arm up and uh, volunteered to go on. So from there, we got out on the beach, asked families to join because we needed members. The club got down to four members. Nancy Cofield, uh, Erica Bird, they, they were instrumental in actually getting the Cofields to the club. From that point on, they, they worked pretty hard and, and in the canteen, getting funds and then slowly the introduction of nippers and then it's the cycle started again. Definitely winning the Australian title in 2010 down in Tasmania. Being the first Victorian club ever to win an Australian title uh, at all ever was just amazing to be able to be part of that team because it was something that had been worked towards for, for 20 years and to be on the podium when we got that cup was, was absolutely an unforgettable experience. That win had been coming for a long time and uh, it was quite interesting to sort of see the background history to it. Since 1998 we attended the Australian titles in South Australia at West Beach and we medalled. Little tiny bay club from Williamstown medalled at the Nationals. Unheard of. Here we are 10 years later looking at the Australian title for IRB racing and no one really could believe that we'd done it. You know, this little bay club sort of sprung up out of nowhere. There's an event called the Men's Teams Race, which takes two drivers, two crews and two patients for it. And there's eight lanes in a final. That year, three of those lanes were full of Williamstown competitors in the final at Nationals. It's not heard of, it doesn't happen. We were in front. Uh, right from the first leg and I just had this overwhelming feeling of this is it, we're going to do it. Currently through any form of surf sport in life saving we have won more Australian medals from the Australian titles than any other discipline in any other club. So that's surf boats, that's boards, across the board we've won, uh, I couldn't tell you how many medals we've won in 2010 alone we won the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships outright. So that's the best of the best of the best. Beat every other club in the country 
beat our biggest uh, competitors out of Queensland, North Burley, on a budget that was about 5% of what they run. Um, and we bought home, in one event in 2010, one event, we bought home 16 gold medals. Primarily through the, the expertise that uh, Jason Wyatt and Scott Ivey actually, they were so keen uh, and desperate to learn that they, they sucked up all the information that they could travelling up and down the coast and going to see other people and how they were going, that they developed their own style and right to this day, you know, what's that, 15 years later, uh, we're in a, uh, a very commanding position in, in uh, not only nationally, but also in, in Victoria. I think we've won the last five of six or seven titles uh, for Victoria. So it's just an awesome thing because the knowledge they gave our guys has been incredible. I think through all the years of hard work, both serious and fun, the thing about this Life Saving Club is it has been a place where thousands of people, most of them as young, if not younger than me, have come to learn to swim. That is the best. Here we teach members from such a young age about their responsibilities. It starts when you're in the under 10s, under 11s, when you're teaching kids how to look after equipment. When the age of under 12s, under 13s, you're giving, you're giving kids a $1,500 piece of equipment to go and take out with them. Well, my first memories of the club was when I was really, really little and my mum was patrolling at that stage. So we used to all go down and play in the pool while she patrolled. I think I was maybe five or six or so. I vaguely remember catching my first wave on one of the old Howard Hughes boards that only had the two black handles at the top. I'm an older brother and he was always involved in the Surf Life Saving Club so I was always around with my mum when I was a baby and he would be running around with his friends causing a lot of mayhem. We'd do nippers and it was freezing cold and there was only ten of us and we'd have to go in the water and just keep on chugging away trying to get more people to come to Nippers on a Friday night and have the hot Milo afterwards and the sausage sizzle. I used to love paddling the boards in the under nines and stuff. I remember doing a few races there, that was good fun. As people get older, 15, 16, they start looking at leadership roles in their patrol and that sort of thing and they're responsible for teams of people and the club entrusts them to make good decisions and as a result of that, uh, the club gives them an ownership of the club, the facilities, um, and because they're given that, that's those opportunities, then they sort of grow into the responsibilities. And one thing I learned about myself was um, I'm better being thrown in the deep end and learning to take charge that way. Um, because for so long I was just a water safety and then all of a sudden I was taking a four-year-old nipper group that had 30 kids every single week and I had to learn how to take those kids and make sure that they got a good session in because their parents would all, all be watching and <laughs> I had to keep them safe in the water and yeah, it was, I had to learn that very quickly. That's our core job, is passing on that skill set to young kids as they come in from, from nippers right through to the oldest to, to give them that skill set to be able to look after themselves and other people on the beach. I think more than anything, Surf Life Saving teaches you that we have responsibilities and that we all have responsibilities, not just small responsibilities, but responsibilities to each other. It's lots of fun as a kid to come down and enjoy yourself and you don't realise that you're, you're learning all these things along the way. You're learning to look, you know, put back into the community, you're learning to stay fit and healthy, you're learning to be active, you're learning to, to deal with strangers in a, a polite and amicable manner. It's, there's just so many things that you don't understand when you're a kid or a teenager that you're learning from the club that you are learning from the club. Um, it, it makes well-rounded adults. It makes, it makes you grow up in an environment where you're going to be a, a productive member of society as an adult. Surf Life Saving, which is the largest humanitarian organisation in the world, when you look at that, you can go to a beach on the other side of the country and tell them you're a member of a club and you're automatically accepted and welcomed. And I really think it's hard to find that sort of camaraderie, that sort of understanding that sort of faith in people anywhere else. The story of the Life Saving Club is about our great community and how people have found a way to make our community better and safer. It is about looking out for each other, about caring for the beach and the people who use it. The club has been a place that makes a difference to us 
to all of us, where many people have come to learn and grow. I feel that the life-saving movement, the whole movement as it is even then and now, is a wonderful way for young people to become into a sport where you learn to respect both sexes, the infrastructure is... The club has been exceptionally good for my family. I feel like it's part of an extension of my family really um, and, and, the life, and the club's just like home to me. I think it made you more committed really being in a club like this one and having the leaders that we had in those days. I like to think that there is a place here for everyone, grown-ups, teenagers and kids like me, where people come to belong. We look out for one another, always did and always will. Absolutely delighted that I was part of growing up here and uh, I always admired the club. The fond memories were being in the, on the ground floor in expanding the role of life saving from just this one club, helping people in other areas to set up life saving clubs. This place has got foundation, it's got, it's part of Williamstown, it's part of the fabric of Williamstown. So I feel like by belonging to the club, I belong to Williamstown, I belong to the community, I'm, I'm part of Williamstown. As the sign says, the club is about saving life. That's pretty special, I think.